So let's get to the topic at hand, which is the lead in from talking about the X-Pan. And that is panoramic cameras. Because there are lots of expensive alternatives and you know, we're going to talk about them just a little bit at the end because they're not in everybody's budget. But probably the cheapest, more or less real camera that you can get uh, is the Horizon uh, 2002. Now, I used to have one of those. My, one of my friends uh, gave me that as a gift. And that was my introduction to panoramic photography. And I, it was a moving lens camera. It was made in Russia. It's a build quality about uh, two stops better than a Holga, uh, but it had a real lens. Uh, you couldn't focus it because you can't focus those uh, moving lens cameras. And it was, uh, it was actually kind of fun. I, I did some pictures of cars and junkyards and stuff with it. And um, I, I had a lot of fun with it. I also did some portraits, but less successful. I, I, I'm not sure whether it was uh, me, the lens, the, port, the subject. Uh, they were okay, but they weren't great. But you can find them on, let's see, uh, eBay, places like that, Horizon 202. Uh, and they sell for 100 to $125. And, and like I said, the build quality is okay. But you'll be able to make really nice uh, 35 millimeter uh, panoramics with it. Now we come to kind of like uh, the, it's not necessarily a unicorn, but it's a camera that lots of people talk about. And that is the Hasselblad X-Pan. Now I've had this X-Pan for 18 years. And right now the prices for these cameras have gone crazy. I mean, uh, they're selling for $4,000, $5,000. I don't know if you know, but now you will. Uh, Fuji made these cameras for Hasselblad. So they're not real Hasselblad. They have very high build quality, very high uh, uh, Japanese build quality. Uh, the camera feels much like a, uh, a Contax G2, except bigger and heavier. So it's really nice quality, and Fuji makes really good lenses, so the lenses are really good too. But they also built a version for the Japanese market that was called the TX, or the TX-1. Now the TX and the Hasselblad x plane are exactly the same, except the TX came in a kind of a satin, pewtery looking finish that looks very nice actually. And, and the little grip on the side, uh, on many of the Fujis is wood, and, it, and the whole camera looks pretty nice. Now there was a time when the, uh, the uh, TX cameras were a lot less money. I mean, a thousand or more dollars less than an X-Pan, and they're essentially the same camera. And if you can find one today, you know, for a thousand dollars or so less, that's in nice shape, from uh, instead of the X-Pan, I, I would get one because there's no difference really. And then one of the benefits, of course, is that the Hasselblads are rumored, I, I see some stuff about this online, that the, these are black painted cameras. And they're not black painted like Leicas are black painted. So it's kind of have a semi-matte finish. And on some X-Pans, the paint flakes off. Well, that's a bummer if you pay 4,000 bucks for a camera and all of a sudden the paint's jumping off of it like it's like some a beater car that you bought on a Craigslist. So my paint has been good. It, it, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't give it a great look. I mean, it doesn't have that beautiful black shiny look that you get with Leicas, um, but, but it's extremely well made. A and I think if you have to have the brand name, it's the way to go. For a thousand, if you can get the TX for uh, less money, do it. Now they approved the models and they came out with a TX2 and an X-Pan2. Um, and the big difference was this uh, ISO dial. It turns out that if it's not, it's kind of locked in pl a place on the DX setting. And that's kind of where I use it all the time. As long as I know there's a DX, um, 
code on. Lots of these new boutique films, they uh, don't have uh, D, uh, DX settings, and so you're kind of on your own. Uh, and then you have to set it, but I hear that if you move it off here, it's easy to accidentally, I don't know, move it off of that setting. So they took it away, I don't know if they put it on top or where they put it, because I've never seen an x pan 2 or a TX2, but they, from the pictures I've seen, they look identical. Um, and they probably charge more because, you know, whenever they make new changes, you know, like with Porsches and stuff like that, they always like to charge you more even though it doesn't do anything different than the previous model. Then we come to what I like to call the Jeff Bridges camera, which is the Wide Lux. The Wide Lux is a moving lens camera. The X-Pan is not. I, I've never even held an, uh, a Wide Lux in my hands. But if you look at Jeff Bridges' pictures, you got to think, wow, this guy knows what he's doing. Which goes back to, it's really the, the photographer, not really the camera. But the Wide Lux comes in different models, and the prices kind of range. I've seen, I think they have models like F6, F7, F8. The lower the number, usually you can get them cheaper. I've seen uh, them as low as 600 bucks and as more than 1000 Which really surprised me that they're, that they're cheaper than an X-Pan. But then the X-Pan is more versatile because you can shoot regular 24 by 36 film in it and the lens doesn't move, which can be a problem depending on your subject matter because it takes time for that lens to make a little trip. The Wide Lux is widely loved and beloved by uh, many people. Uh, my wife has said she wanted to get me one for Christmas. Now we'll we don't know that because this is being recorded before a week before Christmas. So I don't know if that's really going to happen. I hope not because I really hate to think of her wasting a whole lot of money like that on, on me. Especially when I have an X-Pan. So, but anyway, the Wide Lux is a terrific camera. And it, since it's much less money than an X-Pan, you know, it might be an alternative for you. It's not cheap, but it's still less money. Now, there's ways you can lose your mind. There, I mean, one of the cameras, like the Noblex, they make 35 millimeter and 120 cameras. This is a Japanese company that made really, really high quality, beautiful panoramic cameras back in the day. And you can find them on, um, you, on eBay and places like that uh, for all kind of crazy numbers, um, 2,000 bucks. So if the whole idea of the, the moving lens appeals to you, you have, you have alternatives. You have as low as 100 bucks for the, for the, for the horizon. You can, get, you can get a Wide Lux or you can get a Noblex. Noblex also makes the 120 cameras that are just pretty works of art, really. As is Linhoff. Linhoff made a camera called the uh, Technorama, I think it was called, that shot really, really wide. And as I mentioned last week, Fuji had a 617, which gives you three wide uh, frames on, on a roll 120 film. These are beautiful cameras. It's always been on my photographic bucket list to own a 670, just because they're such a bizarre camera. They have a big lens guard on the front because they've got this big honking lens, super wide angle lens that's going to cover a 6x17 format. My, my friend Ralph had one. I think he sold it, but I, di I didn't find out what he sold it for, because I might be tempted. But they're crazy and they're wonderful. And I think also that they make a six by 12. Don't quote me. I'll add a little text thing here if I can double check that one. But Fuji's an alternative too. So there are lots of expensive ways to go panoramic. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, I'll see you again really soon.